Hi everyone, welcome back to the Be Nice Show. This is Sarah. Welcome if this is your first time on the show and welcome back if you've been here before. I'm so happy to be back and as always, I look forward to the guests that come to the show and I hope you do the same as well. Like I always say, everyone is special in their own right. And she is special because she's a teacher, she is a politician and an activist for women and girl child, especially in Uganda and Africa at large as a continent. Her name is uh, Winnie Chiza, Honorable Winnie Chiza. She's also a former leader of opposition in the Ugandan government parliament of 2016 to 2018. And uh, she's on the show with us today. Happy to have you on the show. I'm so glad that you honored our invitation. And uh, I, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll say thank you so many times during the show because of what you do out there. And I couldn't wait for the world to hear the work that you do, especially for the girl child. I noticed like a few years ago that most times, we tend to put most of the focus, especially in the African culture and, and some other cultures, is put on women. Uh, women have to be groomed this way. They have to be taught this. They have to be prepared this way. And in most cases, young boys are left behind and they're left to fend or figure things out themselves. But then again, we forget that they are going to be leaders. They're going to be husbands. They're going to be um well, leaders in their communities, but if they haven't been prepared, this woman who is prepared is going to have problems dealing with this man who hasn't been prepared. I don't know if that makes sense. Boys of today are tomorrow's dads. They're going to have girl child as well, girl children. And if they haven't, if they do not understand the issues of a woman today, a young girl today, it's going to be even harder for them to understand that later when they become fathers and dads of girl children. So I feel like what you are doing is literally changing from the grassroots, changing for a better playground for, for both boys and girls to be able to work alongside each other and while they understand each other. Talking about challenges of a girl child in Uganda and obviously Africa, from your experience, because for some of our listeners, they, they cannot even begin to imagine the challenges that women go through or young girls go through in certain parts of the world. Like it, it sounds so foreign to them. Would you be able to sort of share some of some challenges that you've seen amongst young girls or even young mothers? So really women, are, there is a lot that is expected from a woman. At some point, for me, I do imagine they forget that you are equally human being. Everything wrong is blamed on a woman. So that is why the women must have some other level of training that goes beyond what the men get. However, training them together makes it even easier. That they get to understand that they need each other. That in a marriage, the marriage is about two people. The upbringing of children is about mommy and daddy. Maybe even contributing to the welfare of the family should be an issue of both spouses. So the man should also know that good education of a spouse is a blessing to him as well. Enabling his wife to have some time off and be fresh and be helped in doing the housework is for the good of their relationship as well. When you talked about supporting, like to enable the wife to support the husband or the, the their partners, I, I just thought that um, in some incidents, when they, God forbid, when the man leaves the world and leaves the mother with children, it's somewhat, despite the fact that the woman doesn't own anything, she doesn't, she gets inherited, but she doesn't inherit anything. But when the man yeah. passes on, God forbid, she has to support these children, and yet she was never prepared to do that part yes. of that, that work. Like she has to find ways to fend and somewhat it affects these children's welfare in the long run. But I don't know why people do not see this. So that is in a way what we are trying to let the boys understand, that if the boys can have empowered women, then the children upbringing will become better. 
that power can be transferred to the children's growth, that power can be transferred to the development of the community. Statistics have shown that women who are empowered will give birth in health centers, will be able to complete all the cycles of immunization for their children, they will go for antenatal, they will support the development of their areas, and that communities or nations that have supported women, the emancipation of women, the development of women, the involvement of women have increased their GDPs. And so it is very, very important to support both the males and the females for the good of our nations, for the good of the world. Amazing. So talking about the challenges and everything, obviously the last two years have been challenging worldwide for pretty much everyone. But um, what some people don't get to appreciate is the fact that a woman who on a normal everyday life is already squeezed in this corner, it has been even harder during lockdown because uh, so many things have, have happened and we've been reading things and some things don't really come out. But you as a leader, what sort of issues have you seen arise around a girl child in, uh, in a place like Uganda or less developed countries? So unfortunate that we really were hit hard by the corona pandemic. My heart goes out to all those who have lost loved ones to the scourge. And we continue to pray that someday we find a lasting solution to this so that we can be happy again, so that we can once again hug, so that we can once again join families and be happy. But the situation became worse in uh, Uganda. It is on record. Our children have been out of school for two year, complete years. But out of that, again, the girl child has suffered. Domestic violence went on the increase. I know dropping out of school for our girls is going to go on the increase because by September, research was showing that over 150 young girls had gotten pregnant in Uganda. And I'm very sure these ones will never go back to schools. You know, we are fighting a culture where if there is an opportunity cost to be taken in terms of educating children, it should be the boy to be given fees first and the girls can be abandoned. Now, the situation has been made worse by them getting pregnant. I'm not so sure that their parents will willingly take them back. The violation of their right to education, for example, puts them at a disadvantage of accessing other facilities like jobs. Even when jobs are not there, I'm not so sure that these girls who have become pregnant will get the chance of getting it for more employment. So COVID is going to give us a generation of lost opportunities. And a huge gap in... Yes, a huge gap in terms of education, a huge gap in terms of uh, empowerment. And of course, we are going to have a generation of child-headed families because majority of those who are pregnant, the ones impregnating them, are their age mates. So majority of these now are going to start families. You will find a family where the child is the mother, the other child is the father, they are having another baby. And with the poverty levels in the, in the homes, I'm not so sure that the parents will be of much help to enable these young people move into life, maybe to where they would have otherwise been. So the girls in Uganda are facing a challenge of the pandemic. We just pray that possibly the situation gets back to normal and that the government softens on its stance and they create skill centers where these girls can get opportunities of learning, where the girls can be trained in other skills that can enable them to put a meal on their tables. But otherwise, domestic violence is going to increase because I know that sometimes domestic violence increases when the spouses cannot get the basics of life and the man entirely blames it on a woman. So the fighting in the home begins. The fighting begins and it may end up causing children, other children. Now these young people who are brought up by the young ones 
either to be street kids or in a way they will also find themselves marrying off at an early age because these young people may not be in a position to get the basics of life that their children want. So it's going to be a vicious cycle. Crazy. Um, someone shared something with me a couple of days ago as I was preparing for our talk today. And uh, the message they sent me was apparently there are some parts of the country that pregnant girls have been told to not go back to school, regardless of if they were going to be able to, in terms of if their parents are going to pay school fees for them. They've been told that do not come back to school because you're going to influence other girls who are not pregnant. Now, uh, th that by itself is insane to even think that, okay, someone is already on the ground. Like, why can't she come to school to at least get something that will help her? So you are punishing her even more. And whoever impregnated her is going to go to school tomorrow and he's going to have a bright future and he's going to carry on like no more, like nothing was going to change with them. That really bothered me. Actually, heads of schools went on record. They were on television, they were on radio, saying even when the minister has said we should allow them back in school, for us as school owners, we are not allowing them to come and spoil our own children. We are not allowing them because we don't have the facilities to take care of pregnant mothers. We are not going to allow them because they are spoiled already. You see now the tag, spoiled girls. They don't care whether a girl was raped. They don't care whether a girl found herself in a compromising situation that led to that, but is already a spoiled girl. But the boy who impregnated her is a hero, is fathering his education. Life is normal. Life is continuing. I'm also thinking of the mothers of these young girls because I, I feel like they're going to also get the blame for the fact that they're daughters are pregnant but then somewhat they're the ones who have to step up from a mother's point of view to be able to support these girl children to maybe support them maybe to of course the mother is not going to look at her child and her grandchild suffering and not be able to step up so again i feel like there's going to be more pressure on top of what was already existing it, it literally breaks my heart. It just breaks my heart to, to imagine that there's this generation upon generation of women who are being oppressed and pushed in a corner every day. And most of them do not have any skills to fall back on. And speaking of skills, what skills do you think in this part of the world could possibly help these young mothers or mothers at large, women? What skills do you feel like would empower them to, to fend for themselves? Of course, there are a lot of skills that you can give them. First of all, they first need to be psychologically prepared for the future. Let them understand the life they are going to begin now taking on the responsibility of being a mother, taking on the responsibility of being... Others have been forced into homes, by the way, to go and start staying with their husbands. So now at that age, she's going to become a housewife, a wife to someone, and in a few months she'll be a mother to someone and expected to begin hustling for the baby so for me, as a matter of uh, agency, I was thinking that if possibly these girls can be given some tailoring training, skills in tailoring, skills in hairdressing, because I know many people are taking care of themselves, they are grooming, and in a way, areas that do with uh, human beauty, people love them. If they can be given those skills in uh, saloon management, hairdressing, if the boys can be given opportunities to go for carpentry and bricklaying, maybe even plumping, those are skills that do not need a lot of education. And if someone can do some of them in their neighborhood, people are building, those who will have done bricklaying and uh, carpentry can do the work within their neighborhoods. The girls who will do tailoring can begin doing the tailoring within their neighborhoods. The ones who will be doing hairdressing can easily do the hairdressing even within their homes. So these are some of the simple, simple skills, cra making crafts, 
They can be doing mats, they weave, uh, they do baskets, they do shoes. Those are some of the simple skills that may not require a lot of capital, and yet they can empower these girls to begin bringing in money to support their little ones. Meanwhile, we talk about now them engaging in agriculture because Uganda is, in a, is an agricultural country, but surprisingly, the young people don't have access to land. And because they don't have access to land, so you may not talk about these young pregnant girls to embark on a venture in agriculture. You just have to begin on the basics that can always bring food on the table. So those are the ones, the simple training skills that I can talk about that can help them put money on the table for food and maybe enable them to take care of their little one. Maybe then in the future, as they grow up, they may now begin thinking of taking on serious ventures that will start seeing them take the child through school. Mm. The skills you just mentioned, most of them are things that someone can do even like whilst uh, taking care of the home or doing house chores, they take off some time and do these skills. One thing I believe in is that when we grow up, all of us, we learn most of the things we learn, we learn them from our mothers. And if these mothers have a little skill, I feel like that generation of babies who are going to be teenagers in 11 years or so, they will learn some of these skills alongside with their mothers and possibly help them given the the culture in the, in this area children you find that most times children can't go out and and support their mothers actually to bring food to the table are you involved in any of these programs or any program at all that uh, people maybe can uh, look to and maybe replicate in other parts of the country in at the center for now no but I've been doing a lot of this as a woman member of parliament because, like I've told you, the center is something we are still developing. I was doing the mentorships with other women groups and other f- colleagues in the civil society who are doing a lot of mentorship for young leaders. At the district level, as a woman member of parliament, I was partnering with some centers that have these skills. And I was picking some vulnerable girls from the community take them to the centers for tailoring, for hairdressing, for shoemaking. And they are doing amazing things, amazing things that you look at them and you say, yes, at least there is a smile on someone's face. At least we have wiped the tears from someone's face and we are making them look on to tomorrow. So there are people who have these centers. All the, the young people need is to have people to lead them to the centers and possibly be in position to pay the little that is required of them for them to access these centers and be trained. Are they easily accessible, these centers? Because I'm thinking uh, someone listening, maybe someone might want to to contribute in terms of uh, monetary or voluntary, like uh, to to come and share their skills, counseling and and maybe share skills uh, where they can contact them. Yes, I want to make an appeal to anyone who may wish to support the vulnerable girls who have been victims of COVID and are now getting out of school because the situation has forced them into getting pregnant, but they are ready and willing to pursue a different line that can enable them to start life to come forward and assist. The centers are accessible, and I know that if they are given this opportunity, this would be their second chance in life. They might have learned from their lessons. They might have learned from the experiences that they are now going through. And I know any opportunity coming to them will be so dear to them, they may not want to let go. Where are these centers? Where can someone, are you going to share with us that we could share in the communities? Which centers, like specific centers? Yes, the centers are there. I can possibly at a later stage even give you a full list of the centers that they can go to. But I can tell you that there are even individuals in the community. There are centers, for example, that belong to government. They may not be accessible to all the people from wherever they are because they are scattered everywhere. But those who are closer to those centers, they only need a small push to get to these government centers. Then they are those that are housed by some different civil society organizations. The learners need only to contribute a small fee 
to enable them learn. And I'm very sure that our young people may not even get this small fee that is required of them. The centers are all over. They are accessible, they are in our districts, and everybody can access them if they are given an opportunity. But in the meantime, the technical centers that we have in Uganda are many that are doing skills development. And even if someone Googled the technical centers in Uganda that are giving skills development, one would be in position to see all of them, including those that are for civil society organizations that are skilling young people, including the ones that have been started by the young people themselves. And of course, including those that are just being supported by individuals in their communities. If someone has been making maths for the rest of his or her life and is ready to assist those ones who can come by to say we want to learn. So all the learner will need is to buy the materials for learning. So some, those are some of the issues that we would like anybody wanting to support to contribute to. So what I'm going to promise our listeners is wherever they download this from, I'll uh, try to put together a list, possibly from you or other people. I'll, I'll try to get to get that list of different uh, centers and provide that in form of a link. So wherever you get this podcast from, this episode from, look out for the link and get in touch with those community-based associations. Get in touch with them and see if you, how you can support them. And um, obviously, I was thinking at a later stage, uh, maybe we could have you back if you happy to do that. When you get the center open, would you be willing to come back to the Binai Show and talk us through what's happening and maybe see how uh, people, people are always willing to help, especially when it comes to communities and communities involving young women. Would you be willing to come back and, uh, and share with us the developments at the center? I'm already and willing to be back. That would be a great. And share with the listeners, share with the people, the development, the far we have gone and possibly invite them to be partners to this great idea. I would love to be one of those. <laughs> wow, thanks. <laughs> I would love to, and I'll be obviously getting in touch with you. I'm going to be checking on you every so often and to see where Thank I can you. help. Any last words you would like to leave us, any words of wisdom, any remarks, closing remarks you'd like to leave to our listeners and myself included? To you, Sarah, and the listeners, of the Be Night Show, I want to pray that let's make the world a better place for all our children to grow in the fear of the Lord. Let our children grow knowing that they need to be accountable for their actions and for the actions of those around them. And to the young people, I just want to let them know that the sky is not only the limit, but they should even go beyond the sky. There is a lot for them that is waiting for them, that is ready for them. They only need to make a move and reach out there to what is waiting for them. And that they have this power within them to make things happen. Let them use this power and potential that they have to make lives better. And I call upon all of you, the listeners, take a step to wipe a tear. Take a step to wipe it here. The world is hurting. The world needs someone to touch it. When I talk about the world, I just don't talk about space. I talk about human beings. Human beings are in pain. Human beings are suffering. We are missing love. We need people to care for us. We need people to show us that we matter. And we need people to extend a helping hand to the young people and to the elderly. And therefore, let us use this year to be nice. <laughs> let it be our commitment to be nice. Be nice and reach out to others. As for me, I have chosen to do one little thing, to be a voice of the voiceless. How about you? Thank you so much. You've been an amazing guest. And I look forward to working this journey with, with you and everyone involved and everyone willing to help. Every little helps. And with those uh, lovely words, whenever you get to listen to this, come back to the 
links, check out what uh, we will have posted and please do share that with other people. You never know who you might be helping and who might be willing to help. Thank you so much and be nice. Thank you for tuning in to the latest episode of the Be Nice Show. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Google Store, Spotify for the latest show or visit www.sarahbenice.co.uk forward slash podcast. Stay tuned for the next episode. Be nice.